How's it going, guys? I'm Connor from Running Warehouse. I'm here with Zach, Senior Product Line Manager at Hoka. Zach, today we've got a fun shoe. We've got the Challenger 7. It's always been that versatile, almost all-terrain Clifton of the trails. Yep. Tell us about the new update with version 7. Like you mentioned, Challenger is phenomenal when you go road to trail, same run, or they really thrive on either of those conditions. And here we even dialed it that 10% more road. So we know the Challenger's really straddled that line well in the past, but we wanted to get after an even lighter weight with this update. So we were able to kind of take some of the layers out of the upper, have a nice mesh that's still very breathable, but got some durability built into the material itself, and then just kind of lighten up the entire package. So we get well under 10 ounces. We're in that eight to nine ounce range, even with more stack height. Wow, okay, well let's dive a little bit deeper into the midsole. What do we have within the shoe? What are we looking at stacks? Is it gonna be pretty comparable to what we see on the Clifton? Yeah, so there's uh, there's a brand new Clifton update coming out as well, and we mirrored some of those changes here on the Challenger. So we got two extra millimeters of foam, so even more cushioning underneath the foot, and it's a great compression molded EVA that has that consistency for a long mile. So we've kind of fine-tuned that formula a little bit that you'll see in the new Clifton, and it's the same foam here in the Challenger as well. And one last thing that we do with those midsole changes is with that additional stack height, that really lets us to accentuate the rocker even more. So smoother, even more of that roll feeling right from that uh, midfoot to toe off. So it's smoother than ever, it's lighter and more cushy than ever. Yeah, the rocker geometry actually is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but it can completely change the feel oh, yeah. of the shoe. Just getting the shoe on my foot, it feels pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the best feeling challengers to date but we gotta move on down to the outsole. You talked about being a little bit more road focused, but there still are some, some nice lugs to grab in on some of those uh, all-terrain surfaces. Tell us about the uh, outsole and what's gonna be different. So for those outsoles that are meant to go road to trail, we bring some of the lugs a little bit closer together, but the inspiration here isn't to have one consistent lug type or shape. It's really to look after something like a gravel road bike, a gravel bike tire, uh, where you'd have different zones that are meant to be a bit more kind of gripping on the side when you might be in more unstable terrain. You'd have some of those toothier lugs. And then directly underfoot, when you have that more consistent ground contact on the road, you'd want it a little bit closer together, more of that consistent ride. So every little lug grouping is, di is dialed for a different you know, that different use. Yeah, I mean, I feel like when you do go a little bit larger with lugs, it can feel a little bit clunky on the road. Yeah. But how technical do you think this shoe can handle? Are we, do you think this can handle some, you know, rocky, maybe loose gravel? Where, where are we looking at in terms of how technical it can go? Yeah, you can definitely take this road, gravel, and beyond to the, some of those trails. I mean, there's, there's gonna be more very, very, very grippy shoes that yeah. we'd have with like speed goats and Zanals. Yeah. Uh, but this will handle most of those traditional buffed out trails. I'd say California trails, no issues with. Some of those more rocky, rooty ones, you can still use pretty well. All right, finishing the shoe off, we got the upper. How is this gonna fit? Are we looking like a Clifton type fit? Um, and how is it gonna be a little bit different to be tuned for the trail? Yeah, uh, we really do benchmark the Clifton with a lot of those comfort details and the fit. So it's similar last, uh, similar material package. Um, it's a little more closed up in some of those sections, especially midfoot. Uh, where you might get more breathability all the way through the Clifton. You'll have it mostly focused on the vamp, on the toe down, on the shoe like the Challenger, but a little more locked down, especially that heel as well. Right, right. And in my hand, we've got the Gore-Tex version, the all blacked out. It's gonna be just a little bit better for those uh, wet conditions. It really is. And uh, with the Gore-Tex Invisible Fit, it's no longer a booty construction. They're doing some really cool things where you can laminate that layer directly onto the upper. So this is the lightest weight Gore-Tex product we've ever produced. And it doesn't feel like you're wearing a big clunky, you know, uh, waterproof product. It feels like that Clifton, like that Challenger. Well, the Challenger ATR7 gets some pretty big updates. Still is gonna be a great shoe for road to trail use. Really a versatile shoe that can handle anything you throw in its way. For the people at home looking to get this shoe on their feet, when can they have it? Uh, this is just about to launch. So this version, the seven launches here in December and then February for the Gore-Tex version. Perfect, if you're looking to get a pair for yourself, you can find it at runningwarehouse.com.